get started. Thanks for joining the webinar on how to run commissions in Bridal Live. This is a feature that we released a couple weeks or a couple days ago in version 3.0. And we're going to run through, I'm going to show you how to set it up, how to use it to its maximum potential so that you can get the most out of this new feature. So let's get started. All right, <clears throat> so when you ask 10 different shops how they pay commission, you'll likely get 10 different answers. And one of the things that we struggled with was finding consistency in those answers in a way that we could create a feature that was going to apply for the most number of people possible. So with this version that we've released uh, of the commission feature, we feel like we can address 75 to 80% of the stores that do commission um, using this particular feature. Now, if you talk to some shops, um, you'll see, you'll hear that, you know, they have some fine details about how they do their commission. Uh, they might be not paying on alterations, not paying commission on particular items, maybe. Um, and so we feel that the solution that we've come up with is going to be something that applies to the vast majority of folks. If you happen to do a little bit of a different commission structure, you uh, and weigh the costs and the benefits of of having a separate one versus just having a button that you can click to that gives you your commission number at the end of the pay period. Um, really beneficial, really time-saving feature. Um, so what we're going to do in this in this webinar is I'm going to talk about three of the most common approaches to doing um, commission. There are six different ways that Bridal Live can handle your commission, um, but the three most popular we'll go ahead and cover. And then at the end of the webinar, we're going to go through a little walkthrough, and I'll, I'll show you how to set up those different, those different options. All right, so the three most common commission strategies. So the first one is when commission is paid on new business. Every time you know, a, a, new, a bride comes in and pays, um, whether it's full payment or 50% down, when she places a new order, the full amount, the total amount of that order or sale uh, becomes commissionable and therefore the commission is calculated based on the full amount of the sale. Um, that's the most popular way to do it that we've seen as we've talked to folks. Um, obviously the commission amount is before taxes, but one of the nice things about this particular method is that it's a very simple method. It's very easy to, um, to calculate with, and it also motivates the staff to build new business for your shop. One of the uh, downsides, um, which kind of really maybe isn't a downside in many scenarios, is that uh, you could potentially pay commission on dollars not received by the customer. So if a bride cancels her order, you might not uh, the consultant. Um, you might not receive the money, but you've paid the consultant uh, commission for that money that you assumed you were going to get. Uh, I was talking to a shop the other day um, who actually had a really good reason for why that's a good thing. Um, because just because the bride canceled her her uh, wedding or her gown purchase doesn't mean that the consultant didn't actually do her job or his job to get the sale. Uh, so it may be seen as, as a positive in the staff's eyes as well. Um, so that's the first way, paid on new business. The second way is when the consultant is paid as the commission arrives. So if we use an example to demonstrate sort of how this would work, um, this will be much more clear. So if a bride comes in, buys a thousand dollar dress, puts five hundred dollars down, with this strategy, the bride or the consultant would receive a prorated commission amount. So fifty percent of the of the commission would be available in the month that the deposit was received, and then the remaining commission amount would either come in as the final payments received or over a period of months as subsequent payments have been are, are received against the order. This is kind of a nice approach. This is how we used to do it in our store. Um, one reason we like this was because not only is the staff motivated to build new business, but they're also motivated to collect on balances. Uh, we always felt that cash was the lifeblood of the business, and you know, at the end of the month, guess who's picking up the phone trying to get you know all your accounts receivable uh, whittled down to to real cash, um, and get those brides coming into the shop paying off their dresses and either taking them home or storing them in the shop. So that was a nice sort of side effect of doing it. This approach, um, the cons of this approach is doing it manually is next to impossible pretty much. Um, 
unless you just go off of a total cash received. Um, and then the other downside, other con with this approach is that the staff may not receive full commission on canceled orders, right? So they may view that as, as something that they don't like, put a sour taste in their mouth. Strategy number three is when commission is paid when the order is completed. Staff members are paid full commission when the order is complete. So after the bride comes in, either picks up the dress or decides to store it, that's when the consultant would begin receiving commission. The pros with this approach is that it's actually really good cash flow for the store. You know, you're not paying out commission on dollars you haven't received yet. Um, so that's a good approach. Uh, or a benefit of this approach, but the cons are that the staff might not actually be motivated by this. You know, the whole point of doing commission is to motivate staff, and if it kind of backfires when the order is completed, but I have heard of some, some valid scenarios for doing this, um, but that's just the last of the three that we're going to talk about today. <clears throat> so now what I want to do is, is jump into the uh, application and kind of show you how this uh, commission can be set up and how you know the reports look and things like that. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna jump in, we're gonna review the settings page. We are going to create a transaction um, that has that's a commissionable sale. We're gonna enable do, and disable commissions at the transaction level and then also at the line item level so you can see how you can sort of fine tune what Bright Alive is, is putting into the commission pool for a particular order. We're gonna review the reports to show how that uh, that commission amount is calculated and how it comes out. And then we're going to look at um, one of my favorites, the split commission feature, and see how you can split commission amongst employees and how that um, affects the reports as well. So let's go ahead and get started here. I'm going to jump over to my browser. Okay. So I think what I'll do is zoom in a little bit so that everybody can see what I'm doing. Looks like that zoom isn't taking effect uh, in the browser, but in your video, but that's okay. I think we'll be okay with what we have. So the first thing we need to do is review the commission settings. So in order to get to commission settings, you're going to go into settings, log into Bright Alive, obviously. You're going to go to settings, point of sale, and then click on commissions. And this is where you'll specify how commission is paid. So here the first setting is straightforward. Commission is paid and then you're going to answer the question when a transaction is created that's strategy number one from the slides as payments come in that's strategy two and then when the transaction is completed that's strategy three uh, the next thing is you're going to decide how the commission percent what is that based on is that based on the department of the item that was sold on the transaction or does it depend on the employee are you paying your Sales consultants, 3%, and your receptionist, 1%, or, you know, um, is it based on the employee or based on the department? By far, the most popular approach um, to commission is strategy number one that I mentioned earlier, paid on department. So it would be set just like this. And by default, this feature has been rolled out with these settings in place. So if you never change your settings, and you, um, then you'd be able to go in and run your commission. However, you're still going to want to come in and put in the commission percentages for each department. So in here you can see that we don't pay commission on alterations, but we pay three on bridal gowns, 3% on bridal gowns, 5% on bridesmaids dresses, and then you know some of these other departments I just sprinkled in 5%. But uh, we're going to take a look at a bridal gown sale uh, in this demonstration so that you can see how that 3% um, commission is paid. Okay, so that's the settings. That's really all you need to set up um, to get commission going. So the next thing to do is to actually see it in action. So let's go ahead and create a special order. Oops, I need some changes here. Let's save those. Uh, let's create a special order. And I'm going to pick something from my bridal gown department because I know that bridal gowns are getting the 3% commission. So I went ahead and picked my style one, two, three that's in the bridal gown department. I'm just going to put my name in there 
and then uh, I'm going to do this. <clears throat> and I'll go ahead and process some new smart flows and just get this knocked out. And then I'll just do a signature. Okay, all right. So now we're able to, um, let's get a color in here. We're able to look at some of the settings on the, on the transaction that allow you to change how Bright Alive computes the commission. So the first one is available underneath more actions, commissions here. And you can see from this menu or from this pop-up, you can disable commissions for the entire transaction. And you can also start setting up the splits. We're going to cover that a little bit later, but just know that if you don't want to pay commission on a transaction, you don't have to. You would just come into this setting and turn it off. The other way that you can turn off commissions from being calculated is underneath the line item. And you can see here that we've got a little checkbox that says commission disabled. And this would allow me to disable commission, not for the entire order, but for just individual item line items on the orders. Maybe you don't want to pay commission on, I don't know, a particular dress um, because it was a sample dress or it was a discontinued item. I don't know, whatever reason you might have for not paying commission on a particular dress that might otherwise, or product that might otherwise get commission, you can turn that off here. And maybe the veil and any other merchandise would still get commission calculated on that. Okay, I'll go ahead and uncheck that. And now what I want to do is I want to go over to my reports and I want to see how much commission Olga has earned for this particular sale. So let's go into reports. And the two reports that we're looking at for commission are the commission report and the commission item journal. I think as you start getting used to the feature and start beginning to trust the numbers that are coming out, or if you want to just dig deeper into how Bridal Live is calculating those numbers, you're going to want to use the commission item journal. And I'm going to talk to you about how to run that report now. The commission item journal, this, this other one is from a previous transaction that I was doing, but this, this special order 417. You can see here that it shows every single item on a transaction and how much commission is being paid for that particular item. So we can see here that I've got it set up to be paid 3% for this particular department. The adjusted price of the product was $9.99. I didn't give any discounts. And that means the commissionable sales for that particular item was $9.99. And based on the 3% of $9.99, that gives you to 20, that gives you $29.97. And that's the commission amount on a $1,000 dress um, if you're paying 3% or $9.99 dress. And that's how the commission report looks, the commission item journal looks. Now, if there's certain things that you don't want to pay commission on by department, you, we have the multi-select available up here that you're familiar with on some of the other reports. So if you're only interested in looking at, um, let's say, bridesmaids and bridal gowns, and you don't want to look at alterations, and you don't want to look at some of the other departments that commission was paid, or a commission could have been paid on, then you don't have to pay that. You just can run, you can use the report to filter for just the departments or maybe just the vendors that you want to pay commission for. You can also look by one specific associate. So I can see all the commission that Olga earned on bridal or bridesmaids gowns today. And if I run that report, we'll see we just got that one line item now. So that's the commission item journal. It's really meant for digging into the details, but once you're going to run your, and you know, identifying any splits and things like that that we'll look at later, um, but once you've identified and made sure that all the commission is going to the right as associate, you can go to the commission report and very simply run that report and it will group it by the associate and how much commission that they are earning for that particular sale. So, or for that particular pay period. You typically say something like, I'm paying for the 1st of the 15th, and run that, and you'll see all your associates, the commissionable sales, and the commission amount. This is just something that's really easy and handy to take over to your payroll system and plug in these numbers. Um, but then once you're looking for the commission, once you're looking for details, you'll go into the commission item journal. Okay, so that's the reports and how they work. Uh, what I want to do now is cover a split a split commission and walk you through that step a little bit. So if we go into um, search transactions and go back to the transaction we just created, let's do a split. I want to split the commission 
50-50 between Olga and Lindsay. So the first thing you have to do is, you know, they're not, Right Alive is not going to allow you to put in more than 100% commission. So the first thing you got to do is edit the existing commission amount assigned to Olga. So you just click it, change the amount to 50, that's 50%, hit the enter key, and now Bridal Live is going to show you the unallocated amount. This is a, just a quick handy thing to say, okay, well I'm giving 50 to Lindsay, and now it's a 50-50 split on this transaction, the entire transaction, um, for commission. So now if we go back to our report, and let's go to our commission item journal, because this is where we'll see um, everything popping up. Okay, so ignore this first line item, right? The second line item, you'll see that you have two special orders lines here, but the reason it's doing that is it's saying for every line item, and then for every associate that earned commission on that line item. So that's why you see two lines here. Each associate has been designated 1.5% of the purchase price because half of 3% is 1.5, and then the commissionable sales is divided, we have an indicator here that lets you know that, hey, this was a split commission. This was not the standard commission. This was a split commission. And then the, the, the difference here. All right? That's how a split commission works. And if we go and look at the commission report, the same thing, we'll see a similar approach. One of the topic I want to just briefly discuss is that what happens by default? What if you don't turn on commission or disable commission or do any split commissions? And by default, Bride Alive is going to work the same way it does um, without doing any modifications for commission. So what's going to happen is Bride Alive will assume that 100% of the commission for this order is going to the associate assigned to the transaction up here. And it's not until you get in and start editing the splits and that Bright Alive begins splitting those commissions up. Okay, 